Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful tote using Fat Quarters. And we do have a free download for you. It's called Fat Quarter Tote. So grab that Shabby Fabrics homepage at the very bottom. Click on free downloads and you'll be looking through all of our free downloads for the Fat Quarter Tote. And what we have here are some labels. They also include the fabric, the specific cut you'll, you'll uh, be needing for your specific um, fabric that you'll be using to make your tote. So I've labeled those. It's kind of nice, you know, to go ahead and label that. So as you're working, you're like, oh yeah, that's my landing, oh, that's my handles. Um, so it's kind of nice to label those if you would like. Okay, let me go ahead. We're gonna clear this off. This beautiful collection, by the way, is called Anastasia, and this beautiful, like, burgundy fabric is called Suede from P&B Textiles. When I saw these fabrics, I just fell in love with them because really, nowadays, you don't see a lot of large florals that are kind of in that more classic coloring. Um, and so I was really drawn to this collection to make kind of just a classic tote. And I know if you're anything like me, between shopping and going to the gym, I could always use another tote. So right away, what we'll be doing with our main fabric as well as our lining fabric, we'll do the identical process of just sewing one of those tops to both ends and pressing our seams open. And as you and I uh, know that a fat quarter is normally around 18 by 21, maybe 22, um, you'll be using the measurements that are on that download in for both the main and the lining, it's 17 by 20. So I wanna make sure you know you'll be cutting your fat quarters down just a little bit. So just be using the measurements that are on those specific labels. Once you have that done for both the main and the lining fabric, for the main fabric only, we'll be adding that fusible fleece. And I believe that's cut to 25 and a half by 17 and we'll be putting that on the back of our main fabric, and then we get to do some quilting. So if you're like, well, I, I, I'm not comfortable with that, I'll just, get, I'll just show you what we did. Super simple. I, too, am not uh, very skilled at long arm quilting at all, or a lot of fancy machine quilting. What we did with ours, I'll, I'll just take this one out of the way. I just drew some diagonal lines. I grabbed my two and a half inch creative grid ruler like this and I started from one corner and just kind of angled down this direction and I would encourage you to use maybe a choco pen on light fabrics I can use my friction pen no problem and it irons, irons away leaving no residue what I do find about friction pens on dark colors is they can leave a little bit of a haze Whereas with chalk, the white chalk, you don't need to worry about that. So you could just draw right along that line, move it over the exact width of your ruler, draw that line, do the same thing, and come back in the opposite direction. And then you're just draw, um, just sewing straight lines. Now what we did do, if you decide to use the same fabrics, is we did make a thread change because if, we, if you want to really have your thread not showing, we did a beautiful dark red here, almost a burgundy, almost a wine, and a light pink in here. So your choice, what you want to do with that. Whatever that is, go ahead and get that quilted. The next step will be our handles. So let's go ahead and bring those out. And that's what those strips of the fusible fleece were for, those one inch. So once we have our fabric, just like this, where that's where we're using our hot ruler. If you've never used one of these, they're fantastic. Because what we want you to do is take your strip, you will go ahead, fold that edge under by a quarter. And then what I love about my hot ruler is I can just put that in place. Actually, I'll do it on this side because I can see that quarter inch. And as I bring it over to my pressing mat here, just like this, I don't have to guess where that quarter inch is. I can lay that down, bring my iron over, and you cannot, you, no amount of heat is gonna destroy this thing, and I love that. 
because you and I can't bring a plastic ruler on and make contact with our iron or it will melt. So go ahead, both edges are folded in a quarter of an inch for both straps. And as you can see, we simply folded that in half to find our center, lay the strap inside there on one side, just like such. You will iron that in place. And of course, I'd iron that much, I'd leave that iron on much longer. Fold the other edge over just like that and sew top stitch in a coordinating green on either side by an eighth inch here. And go ahead and do it on the other side as well. And let me show you what that looks like. We've done those ahead of time. That's what these will look like here. Now once that's done, we will take our bag and we're just gonna fold that in half this way. And all I'm trying to do is find my crease. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use a little uh, mini wonder clip just to mark that center point because we will, just gonna do a little finger press. There it is. Just flip that. Let me do that on the same side. Our handle, we want to be bracketed two inches on either side of that. And of course you want your handles to be even. That's why we're gonna go ahead and mark that spot. Okay, once you have that, we'll grab our ruler and we're going to just measure two inches on either side of that. So, in fact, I'll put my ruler out here out of the way and I can see there's two inches here and let's just I'm gonna pivot that I am not I am so right-handed I'm gonna go this way <laughs> for all of you out there that are left-handed bless your heart my husband's left-handed and he says I live he says I live in a right-handed world and I'm like yes you you, you do I, I acknowledge that I'm so right-handed so we'll go ahead and pin now go ahead and pivot that around without adding any kind of twist. I've done that before when I've been making bags and that was kind of felt embarrassed. So this from here over from my center of my bag and now two inches this way, we'll go ahead and pin and we're going to sew an eighth of an inch and it's just to hold that in place. I'm gonna put another pin in here move these pins over here because we don't want this to pivot. So I'm going to go ahead and pin the other side as well and I'm just going to sew an eighth inch basting. Now you can even just go straight across here because we're going to come back later and sew a quarter of an inch. So I'll pin the other end as well. I'm going to sew that down with a basting uh, stitch and then when I come back I'll take us to the next step. Okay so just got those sewn down. Our next step, you're gonna be amazed how fast this bag comes together here. Our next step is we're just going to bring those two ends together. Of course, our handles are inside. Let's make sure that we're coming together really nicely right there because if that was off, that light pink to that dark red would be really, really noticeable. Go ahead and pin there first and all the way down. Now we'll go ahead, I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch all the way down on both sides. And then we're gonna move on to something called boxing the corners. So if you are not a person that makes a whole lot of bags, that may be a new concept for you. Um, sewing down a quarter inch is probably not a new concept for you at all. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and again just do that to try to expedite. Uh, we'll try to just fast forward through that in our video.
Okay, now that that's done, we're going to do something called box the corner. And I want to mention an option to you. This is really where you get to decide how wide what's called kind of a gusset is. The bigger you box the corner, the bigger the bag will be on the inside, but the shorter the bag will be because this is just a given length. So the, the corner that we did was three inches. You could do two inches, you could do four inches, you could do five inches. It's really your choice. I'm just gonna kind of cut just a touch of that. It's gonna make it easier for you to see what I'm gonna do here. So basically, I look inside my bag and I'm trying to fold it kind of, see how I can, my corners are kind of pointing toward e each other, kind of the seam. Lay that open. And this is where we'll lay our ruler on top of here. And when you, when I say three inches, it's three inches from left to right. So one and a half inches from side to side. So you can see here, for example, that um, there's my center and that's at one and a half and that's one and a half. So if you want to have a three inch this is where you'll draw your line. And, and that's basically going to be the opening inside the bag. If you want a bag that's bigger inside, you would simply slide this open. This will be your discretion. It does not require um, more fabric to do that because it's all within this contained unit. So you can decide how big you want that to be. So let's just repeat that over on the side. I kind of like to just clip that a little bit because it helps lay that open. It's easier for me to kind of assess and have it lay open. You could also press this open if you wanted to. I don't think it's absolutely necessary to do that, but I'm just trying to get it to lie flat so I can box those corners. Again, we'll lay that down. because I know this distance is three inches. That's going right along my seam. We'll draw that line there. And I always like to pin because I'm gonna move, of course, over to the sewing machine. So this is where pinning, so nothing's gonna move on us, is helpful. I'm going to pin up here too and over here. One more pin. All right, and just so it exactly on that line, let's go do that. Now we'll just trim that away, place my ruler on that, and I have a nice dashed quarter inch line so I can absolutely see where that's located. And same over here. Now with your lining fabric, you're doing the exact same process. Of course, you're not attaching any handles to it, but you're boxing the corners. You're, you're sewing the sides up, just like we did, and you're boxing the corners, just like you saw me do. Now with the main bag, the main part, we're just gonna leave that part wrong side out. It always looks a little weird, doesn't it? <laughs> and with the, so I just wanna show this to you. This was the lining fabric, and again, we just sew down the sides and then box the corners. So that part, I want you to see that. Now you'll go ahead and turn the lining right side out. If you need any help getting those corners out all the way, that clover point, I love how it gets those points just perfect. 
Okay. Now you'll go ahead and take this lining and you're going to put that inside your bag. And of course, you're trying to line up those side seams. So let's just place that inside our bag. And I can kind of make the box corners fit really nicely. And again, over there in that other box corner. And now my job, I want you to see this. As you see those side seams right there? Go ahead and start there. Notice I have one moving in one direction. You could also try to press them open. That's a really nice option. Let's try that actually. I'll just, I think that's a better option. We'll go ahead. I'm gonna use my wonder clips for this. I can see that's gonna work better. Actually, I'll be sewing from this side. So the reason I want to always evaluate what side am I gonna be sewing on? Well, I'm definitely gonna be sewing out here. I want the clear part of the Wonder Clip now to be on the inside because as you look at the profile of a Wonder Clip, there, it's arcing here but flat here. It's going to ride much better along the table of your sewing machine if the clear flat portion is on the inside. So I'm going to clip all the way around and then sew a quarter of an inch, but we have to leave an opening. Now let's try to... I really don't want to leave an opening necessarily where the handles are, so I might try to leave an opening between here and here, but I need to leave it big enough so that I can turn the bag through. I'm going to try to not have that opening be where the handles are. It's just more to have to turn in by hand. So let me go ahead and get it clipped. I'm going to sew that, leaving myself an opening, and I want to turn that through together with you but I definitely want to get this well clipped, so that's going to take me a little bit of time, and you don't need to, you're not going to want to watch me do all of that all the way around. But that's what I love about these Wonder Clips. I'm not poking myself, and it's a lot of bulk we're going through. When I'm just doing simple piecing, I'm always using my patchwork pins, but the more layers and bulk I add, I'm grabbing for my mini Wonder Clips. All right, I'm going to continue to do my Wonder Clips, take that to my sewing machine, Again, I'm going to try to leave that opening probably right in around here if I can. And then when I come back, we're going to turn our bag through. All right, so I've left an opening. Let's hope it's big enough. <laughs> Let's turn this bag through. So now when you have your fat quarters at home and you're like, what do I do with these? It's really fun to be able to dream up a combination of uh, colors and what would that be like in this color and that color. You could do applique on, on the main part of the bag too. You could put a monogram, an initial, just some ideas. We have shabby shapes. You may have seen those on the website. Um, all kinds of fun things that you could be doing. They have fusible webbing on the back, so you could be buying those and applicating something to the main part of the bag, and it's just a, another fun way to add a new dimension. All right, so looks like that was plenty of a gap, and now we'll just kind of push our lining into our bag. Just kind of get it all pushed into those corners. Once you're satisfied, everything's kind of pushed in. Now what we'll do is you can see we need to kind of, kind of attach all of this. And of course, we have to close the opening, right? So you know that we've sewn with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I think my iron's cooled down, so let me get that heating back up. So as we get ready to close this, that's again where I love to go to my Wonder Clips. And as I just kind of pull this down, I'm just going to be clamping that so that doesn't want to roll. So this part over here is, an, is no problem. All you're trying to do is just get that seam back up to the top, smoothed out, put your Wonder Clip in here, get that done. Now as you get over to where that opening is, 
we can take that to our mat, bringing that down by a quarter of an inch. It's, it is helpful if you can kind of pre-iron that. It's one last thing to deal with. Now the side that's quilted won't want to be quite as compliant. So you might have to work at that just a touch. Make sure you do get that at least a, qu at least a quarter of an inch. I shouldn't say at least. Make it a full quarter because we're going to come back and top stitch that back with only an eighth of an inch. So you want to make sure that you have indeed folded that down by that quarter of an inch so that you will catch it when you come back in the very end. So just like that, and we will bring those together. And again, we'll add our wonder clip in. This part just takes a little bit of extra time to get that opening closed so that you're happy it looks good. And you continue around just like that. Wonder clipping all the way around. And then I'll grab the finished bag and I can just show you what that's like. This, because this is not a mystery at this point. We just keep wonder clipping, rolling that, and then you come back to the machine. And notice I have that kind of plate out. So that's what's nice about that is as I put this around right onto the machine and it easily just goes around um, this extension without any issues. So let me show you the, the finished bag that we did here. And you can see how nice that looks with that top stitch right all the way around. And it's a nice big bag. So hey, and even if you wanted to add a pocket inside to your lining, you could be doing that as well and even taking the bag to the next level. So thank you for letting me show you how fun and easy it is to make a tote using fat quarters. I'll see you in a future shabby video.